Hello students. So we are back with another chunk from the Tempest from Act 4, Scene 1. We had stopped at a point where Cerise had entered the scene and along with Juno and Iris, she blesses the couple, that's Ferdinand and Miranda. So Iris, Cerise and Juno bless the couple for a long life, a bountiful life and happiness and a prosperous life, right? So that's where we stop. We are now remember that these roles are played by Ariel and his spirits, but they were beautifully dressed, very elegant, replicating spirits from the other world, right? So if you can imagine the scene in front of Ferdinand and Miranda, it was a beautiful scene, okay, grand scene, because these are goddesses in their chariot, blessing the couple. So Miranda was still aware of Prospero's magic, but she had never seen it in this intensity, right? But Ferdinand was a common man. He comes from the court, so he's seen this, he's seen characters and people playing the roles, dressing up and in costumes playing this role. But here he's seen spirits in a natural world on the island, uh, playing these roles, blessing them on Prospero's orders and charms, right? So Ferdinand certainly is spellbound, okay? And that's where he's going to express his surprise. He's going to express um, the surprise with which he's witnessing all these things. So he says, this is the most majestic vision and harmoniously charming, charmingly. So this vision that is in front of him is most majestic. It's harmonious and it's charming. Harmonious because it also had a sense of harmony to it. As you know that there is a song and Juno and Ceres bless in form of a song. So that it's a harmoniously, char it's, har it's called harmoniously charmingly. Okay, it's charming uh, Ferdinand and Miranda, certainly uh, Ferdinand, but in a harmonious manner. Okay, charmingly, magically and harmonious in a rhythm, in harmony. May I be bold to think these spirits? May I dare to? May I be bold enough to think that these are spirits? Because here on the island, he's not seen anybody other than Prospero and Miranda. So who are these? And these creatures were beautifully dressed. So he says, may I be bold enough? May I be dare to ask you if these are spirits? To which Prospero says, spirits which by mine art, I have from their confines called to innate my present fancies. So he says these are spirits, but these are spirits who, have, who are summoned here with my art. Art refers to his magic, his power. So with my art, these spirits are here. I have brought them here from their confines, from the, their dwelling place. So these spirits live in the natural world. From those natural places, from that natural world, I have brought them here with my magic to entertain you at my own will, okay? So I have from their confines, from their confines, from their dwelling place, from, from the place where they live. And where do they dwell? They dwell in the natural world. So from their natural world, I have brought them here to enact, to put, put up this show. So they are enacting this show. So I've brought them here to enact my present fancies, fancies, my wishes, my fa uh, fantasies. So all my fancies and fantasies, these spirits are bringing it true in order to entertain and bless the couple, okay? So Ferdinand says, let me live here ever. So he is spellbound by this magic. He's thrilled, he's delighted by this magic. And he says, I wish to live here forever. And chances are, if according to Ferdinand that he's stranded, he's going to be living here forever. He does not know that this, is, this was a part of Prospero's plan. He says, let me live here ever. So rare a wandered father and a wife makes this place paradise. So he says, so rare to have such a father-in-law. Father refers to father-in-law. To have such a father-in-law is a matter of wonder because father-in-law can perform magic, bring spirits uh, and uh, bring this whole scene, magical scene in front of them. So, so rare, a wondered father, wondered, wonderful, who can perform wonders, father, father-in-law, and a wife, wife refers to Miranda. Now, this also brings us to a point to remember 
is that Miranda's name also means to be, uh, it means to be wonderful or to be wondered at. That's what her ma name means. So a wife is also something, somebody who's wonderful, something to wonder at. And so is the father-in-law. And in the case of the father-in-law, wonder certainly refers to magic. Makes this place paradise. So because of my father-in-law and the wonderful wife, this place, this island is like, paradise okay so wonder please mark that and remember the two meanings one wonder is referred to prospero's magic wonder another wonder is referred for miranda's name which is which also means wonderful or to be wondered at okay so meanwhile juno and ceres whisper and send iris on employment on employment on a task okay so the goddesses are also at work they're also planning to uh, enhance this experience for Ferdinand and Miranda. So Prospero says, this is to Ferdinand uh, particularly, sweet, now silence, sweet. It's like uh, in term of endearment, sweetheart, like that. Sweet, now silence, now be silent. Juno and Ceres whisper seriously. So both of them are whispering something seriously. There is some sort of development to their uh, to the scene. There's something else to do and hush and be mute very quickly. Be mute, be quiet or else our spell is marred or else this spell that I have cast or else this spell that is in front of you will be hampered, marred, will be destroyed. Okay, so Ferdinand, of course, his state of mind is he's spellbound by what was happening. Meanwhile, there is Iris who or comes back and says, you nymphs called nyans of the windering brooks. So nymphs are the spirits of water, water nymphs. Okay, so she's addressing the water nymphs, which means there are certain, there are more spirits that are going to be summoned to come to this island at the moment. You nymphs, nymphs, spirits of water. Remember these spirits live in water. Okay, so they are chaste, they're believed to be pure. Again, it's a mythological illusion reference where these spirits living in water are called on the island. You nymphs called nymphs. Nymphs uh, are, the, it's a name for water nymphs, nymphs that live in water. Now, these nymphs, particularly the nymphs, were supposed to have their own goddess, okay, had their own uh, uh, queen, which was Diana. Diana who is also known as the goddess of chastity, meaning virginity, as well as the goddess of fertility. Okay, so she's very symbolic to Mother Mary, virgin, as well as fertile. So here, these nymphs can bless the couple with fertility. Okay, especially Miranda with fertility. So you nymphs call nans of the windering brooks. Windering? Windering basically... Uh, it's believed either Shakespeare has coined this word or it could have been a misprint in the first folio of this play. So it, it looks like a word that is a combination of winding and wandering. Okay, But it simply means wind, windering brooks, meaning the rivers that flow in a haphazard or in a zigzag manner. Okay, So windering or rivers that were wandering around. So windering, there is no such word in uh, our dictionary but it's believed that either Shakespeare has coined it or it's a misprint. Combination of winding or wandering. Okay so that's windering brooks, brooks, rivers. So these nymphs who live in the windering brooks, these nymphs, the water spirits, the nyans who live in the rivers with your sedged crown. Sedge basically is, is a plant which is grass-like, it's like reeds. So the crowns that are made of grass okay or made of leaves that sedged crowns so these nymphs wear these sedge crowns because they come from the natural world so their crowns are also made of reeds or made of uh, grass with your sedge crowns and ever harmless looks ever harmless always innocent remember these nymphs were also chaste pure virgin so it, it, their looks are also innocent pure ever harmless always innocent looks Leave your crisp channels and on this green land, answer your summons. Leave, leave your crisp channels, channels of water, crisp 
curling or rippling water, flowing water, curling water, moving uh, in uh, in curly manner. Leave it, leave those channels, leave that river and come on this green land, the island. Answer your summons because you are ordered, you are called. So answer it, okay? Juno does command. This is on Juno's command. This is on Juno's order. Come, temperate nymphs. Again, the word temperate here refers to chaste, pure. The nymphs are addressed as pure, chaste nymphs. To help to celebrate a contract of true love, be not too late. So come here to celebrate the contract of true love. Now, the contract of true love, is, we are seeing that this phrase is repeated. Marriage is seen as a contract. It's got to be true love. Yes, it's a contract between a man and a woman. So a uh, contract of true love, be not late. Come here to celebrate this marriage. Do not be late. So enter certain nymphs. Now these nymphs were beautiful girls, very young, innocent looking, dressed beautifully with their sage crown, a beautiful imagery from nature. So perhaps they are appearing from nowhere. So again, a magical element to this entire performance. Enter certain nymphs. You sunburned sickle men of August Wary. Now this is continuation of Iris's dialogue. So meanwhile, the nymphs are entering. He's also calling somebody else. Let's. She's also calling somebody else. Let's see who that is. You sunburned sickle men. Sickle men refers to men who are farmers or men who are harvest workers. Okay. So now this is rural imagery, countryside imagery. So there are nymphs, spirits who have come in. And then there are farmers who are being called. So of course, this island had no farmers. Yes, it wasn't. Uh, nobody lived there except Prospero, Caliban and Miranda. But these farmers are also going to be spirits playing the role of the uh, rural or the countryside men, sickle men who are busy with harvesting. Sunburn because their job is to be exposed to the sun all day. That's why sunburned. So remember, these are no that these are not real farmers on the island. These are characters played by different spirits. Okay, they are in form of sunburned sickle men. Sunburned complexion is sunburned. Sickle men refers to uh, men who harvest men. Farmers, okay, of August weary. Weary means to be tired. August, season of harvest. So after harvesting throughout the month, they look weary, they look sunburnt. Now they need to leave their work and come to this island so that they can enjoy and dance and be a part of this mask. Okay. You sunburnt sicklemen of August weary, come hither from the pharaoh. Pharaoh refers to fields and be merry. Enjoy, be merry, be happy, make holidays. It's like a holiday for them. They are asked to leave their work and come here on the order of Juno. Make ho holiday. Your rye straw hats. Rye is a crop. Rye straw like hay. So these draw, uh, this uh, dry grass or hay is used to make hats that usually farmers wear, wear while they are on fields. Okay, so with your hats, Come here and these fresh, uh, put on your hats and these fresh nymphs encounter everyone. So dance with these fresh nymphs, French, fresh, young and beautiful. Fresh nymphs encounter, encounter that everybody can see. Meet them and dance with them, everyone in country footing. So these nymphs are going to dance with the sickle men, with the farmers and in a country footing. Country footing refers, refers to country dancing. So as I said, this imagery, this part of the mask uh, attempts to bring out the uh, imagery from the countryside. Yes, images or the scenes from the countryside. Now Shakespeare was known for this. Though he was the royal playwright, most of his plays also did have a touch of the countryside. So along with setting his play in the courts, it also had an additional feature which showed the countryside, the imagery of farmers, rural workers. Uh, of course, Tempest is pretty different, big, different because the entire play is set on the island. Okay, But his other plays also have combinations of the court as well as the countryside. Okay, For example, Much Ado About Nothing was such play, which was a mix of both. So here, coming back uh, to this play and the mask. So this mask 
deals with the countryside imagery where farmers are dancing with their straw hats, where there are nymphs, again, magical element, their nymphs, the spirits dancing with the farmers. So this is a part of the mask. As I told you in the earlier video, that masks were a form of entertainment that were full of songs, singing, dancing, and also skits. Okay, so we are seeing the goddesses playing the part of the skit. They are blessing the couple. Then we see the nymphs and the farmers who are called by Juno to dance and entertain the couple. So this is a part of the mask. Okay, and we will stop here where the mask uh, is, uh, the, where the mask is going on, where Prospero uh, tells the audience that this is through his magic that this mask is arranged. Okay, so we will stop here and we will continue in the next slot.